I'm Alex Cheprev and welcome to Crashing Maya. Hey guys, uh, after my baseball modeling tutorial, a friend of mine challenged me to model the 2014 uh, FIFA uh, World Cup ball, uh, which looks like this. And uh, I thought about how to uh, model it and I think I figured it out. Um, the first thing you always want to do is you want to study it and you want to look at a lot of reference and I found this image which was perfect because the ball is perfectly round and we can see uh, at least two points where the pattern uh, repeats and while also looking at other images of this ball I realized that there are six panels for this ball and something that has six panels uh, is actually a cube so a cube has six panels and if we soften it you can see there's one two three four five six panels and it still looks like a sphere so we can use this to our advantage and this point and this point correspond to this point and this point where the pattern repeats so knowing this we can actually um, model this it, not simply but fast uh, it's going to be a little complicated so this is the way I proceed first thing I want to do I'm going to create a sphere that's going to be pretty dense. This will be my um, projection sphere because we're going to use something called shrink wrap to project our uh, ball onto the pattern. And then what we'll do is I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to subdivide it. One more time. Let's see, is this enough? We can also do it by going in here, typing in two. And uh, I think this will be good enough for now. Now here's the problem with the subdividing a cube. It's not perfectly round. It's not perfectly spherical. You can see where it penetrates. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale it larger. Larger enough that nothing touches like that. Select both. Clear history. Modify freeze. <clears throat> then I'm going to select the, uh, the cube sphere and then our source sphere which are which is really nice and dense then I'm going to go into uh, I'm going to hold spacebar create the formers and shrink wrap I'm going to open the options for shrink wrap and there are a couple of different options we can use here uh, because it's a sphere we can do towards center that would be the easiest thing to do there are other ways to do it but you can you basically have to play with them because I've had different results from different options and they weren't always predictable and they didn't always work the same way each time so towards center should work for us and let's click apply <clears throat> and um, so what happened was this sphere uh, our cube got shrink wrapped or stuck onto the if we turn the wireframe on onto our uh, guide sphere. So I'm going to clear history now. I can hide the guide sphere. We'll bring it back later. And now we have a perfectly uh, spherical subdivided cube. And this is where the pattern is going to repeat from here to here and it's going to repeat on all the other poles, all the other corners. Okay. And the next thing we need to do is we need to create a camera. We're going to use a camera to help us figure out the pattern. So I'm just going to create a simple camera and let's go into set the camera here and here I'm going to set perspective so I can look around see what's going on and in this view this is our camera. I'm going to click this button just to frame it. We don't need the grid right now. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to open up the camera attributes go down to the environment create a uh, an image plane and I want to only see it when I'm looking through the camera and now we need to just pick click the image and find uh, the ball that I grabbed I also went ahead and made it trans uh, the outside uh, transparent and then pretty easy to do just in Photoshop and I saved it as a PNG and the one the other thing you want to make sure is that it's centered it doesn't have to be centered but it's much easier if it's not centered you have to do a lot of other stuff to fix it but keep making it centered in Photoshop will help us out a lot click open and there we have our sphere 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the sphere and set the depth something low, like 10. That way uh, the image plane is close to the camera. And then, oops, I closed it too soon. Go back to the image plane. Uh, there it is, image plane shape. I'm going to sec select the alpha gain and drag it over until I can see you know, the object behind it and I can see uh, the image plane at the same time. I'm going to press F. If you select the sphere and press F, this will center and focus it in camera. Then I'm going to zoom in and line these up. Now, I'm going to keep the camera where it is, but I want to rotate our cube until uh, our... Uh, because it's centered, we can rotate it and it's not a big deal. Until the poles are right lined up with the um, pattern. Now it's not going to be lined up because our camera focal length is 35. We don't know what they used to take this uh, the picture of the sphere, and also they whatever they used is not going to work here because uh, the image is cropped. So I'm going to go into the focal length and set it higher. When I do that, I will need to come back in here, press F, and then we can zoom in. And you can see every time you when you increase the focal length. Uh, uh, what it does is it flattens the image and so that the um, the the parts that are on the outside or the ones that get uh, will get flatter so we see more of the sides and less perspective and it's still too far so let's try let's try 95 And then let's adjust. And that looks almost perfect. Like that. There. So now our pattern lines up. And the other thing you will notice is that the midpoint of our um, sphere also, the pattern also lines up there as well. You see how this curve goes up, over, and then down towards uh, that point there. So what we can do now, uh, I actually want to center it a little better. As we can see, there's it's not perfect. and try and get as perfect as we can. Now if you're having trouble seeing uh, some of the detail we can't zoom in normally but if you hold the backslash it's the um, the button right underneath the backspace and use it instead of alt and then middle mouse button we can zoom without changing uh, without moving the camera and then we can get close and if we increase our manipulator You can get a little more exact with this. And then if you tap the backslash once, it'll reset the camera back. Okay, so that's good. Uh, now what I want to do, I'm going to go into here. <coughs> what I want to do is I want to project that image plane onto the camera. I mean onto the sphere. So I'm going to uh, select our sphere and click Assign New Material. I'm going to make a surface shader. I'm going to click the uh, checker box. I'm going to right click on file and then create as projection. This will create a uh, projection plane. Now what we need to do is set the projection type to perspective which will then give us an option to link the camera shape. So we can then link uh, because we our camera is called camera 1 we have to use camera shape 1 and let's just select the image, the same image, soccer ball and then we need to go back to the projection because we need to play with this a little bit now if we come back in here I'm going to go to the camera options I'm going to turn off 
the projection for now. I'm going to press 6 in here. Now we can see uh, the projection, but what you will notice is that it doesn't line up. And it doesn't line up because of the way it's, because our uh, image, image plane is projected outside of the resolution or the camera uh, resolution. It's not a big deal. All we need to do is go into the, uh, let's go into our <coughs> planar uh, projection node and uh, let's change the fit type to vertical and that's it so that worked you see now it's lining up now what's nice about this if we go in our perspective view press 6 we can see there's our sphere and there's the pattern projected onto it of course on the back it, it's going to be messed up but here you can see it aligns perfectly to our uh, cubed uh, our sphere made out of a cube now the thing is you see how the cube has rotations not a big deal we'll select the camera and the projection node and then I'm going to just drag it into the cube take the cube and reset the transformations uh, rotations to zero and then we can take these two out so now our cube is at zero uh, oops slightly uh, move it as well so let's just move it back to zero that way everything's nice and clean at the origin and there it is so here's our uh, our sphere and the projection right on it uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a curve so I'm gonna select uh, the cube and click the button here this uh, magnet this will make it live and now going to go to the curve tool select the EP curve tool and we, if we want we can turn on wireframe and then we're going to just click here and see it sticks to the to our uh, sphere and I'm just gonna draw actually want to place a point right there and we just need to end up here that's where our pattern will repeat all right and we can edit it if we want I'm gonna actually use the edit points to edit they'll stick whoops there all right whoops I'm going to select this turn off uh, live we don't need that anymore we can hide it for now let's look at the curve that looks good I'm going to unhide I'm just going to snap these points to the vertices here just holding V and middle mouse dragging Now let's see if the pattern works. Uh, this is going to be really simple. I'm going to take this and then I'm going to um, flip it. I'm going to duplicate it. Flip it like this. Negative one. And negative one and then rotate it back negative 90 so basically we flipped it and reversed it so if we look at the sphere we can see the pattern is unbroken now see it continues and now I'm going to select these two I'm going to freeze them modify freeze I'm going to duplicate and then rotate this 90 degrees and then shift D shift D 
like that. And then we need to select all of these, duplicate, and rotate it negative 90 here. Okay. Nope. Okay, I know what I did wrong. So instead of uh, doing what I just did, I'm going to duplicate and rotate it in Z 90, then Shift D, Shift D. There. And there's our pattern. And if we unhide our cube, you can see what it looks like. See the points line up to what our uh, cube, uh, where our cube is. And now if I group it, or hide this, if I take this and duplicate it 90, shift D, shift D, and there it is. There's our sphere, our uh, 2014 football. OK, well, what are we going to do with this? Well. There's not much we can do with these curves. I'm just going to group them. Oops. What I want to do is uh, I want to be able to see where the edit points are. I like to actually see those when I'm working with curves. So I'm going to go to Show. Uh, oops, sorry. NURBS, Edit Points. This will show me where the points are. So, And I'm looking at parts that can um, repeat or can uh, connect. So we'll have to connect that way. All right. All right, we'll try and make this work. That'll be our... OK, so now uh, I'm going to select this again. I'm going to make it live again. And this time I'm going to open up the modeling toolkit, select Quadro. I'm just going to quickly rough out the shape like that So the way Quadro works, it just makes points uh, wherever you click. And then when you hold Shift, it will let you make geometry. Like that. All right, let's, let's turn this on so we can see our geo. You can also then hold Control and add points like this. Now, for this pattern to work, um, each side has to be perfectly equal. So if we have four here, we have four here and four here as well. Otherwise, this will not work. That means uh, every time we add loops, for, for, so if I'm adding loops like this, I have to add loops this way as well. So before I do that, I'm just going to, so you can middle mouse drag. And it will let you move the points uh, it's kind of freaking out right now Let's see if we can this will oh yeah there it is so sometimes viewport 2.0 freaks out just turn it off and this we have to add, when, to round this off uh, if you press 3 you see how the uh, previous shape gets smaller so we have to push these points out to kind of uh, adjust, uh, compensate for that. Same here.
and I'm, I'm holding shift and left clicking and this kind of smooths things out a little bit it's a pretty nice uh, little tool that Quadra has okay now I can hold control and add these loops because we have to end up being even in the number of loops on each side so if there's uh, however many there are on this side we need to have the same on this side and this side because this part is the same as this part so this right here is the opposite of this one it's the reverse so we have to make sure they're all the same and we'll have time to adjust that okay all right so that's good I'm gonna just turn off the, that turn off the modeling toolkit Oops, turn that off and just press F8 which will take us into object mode get rid of this we can uh, oops turn that off hide that and I'm also gonna hide the curves for now so now if I take this and duplicate it rotate it 90 degrees and one more time and there's our pattern we need to uh, f close this off so what I'm gonna do is try and close this off alright so let's do it um, first thing I need to merge these vertices here so I'm going to combine click merge there and then I need to separate because these are uh, not th this is bad geometry when they merge so we need to make sure we split them up so we don't get, have any issues yep now they're split so now I'm going to use uh, a boundary which I showed in one of my videos on how to close up holes so I'm going to go to uh, modify convert poly edge to curve and then this one and that one and that one select uh, all four spacebar surfaces boundary you want to set this to complete polygons quads general uh, set this to isoparms, isoparms 1 1, click apply. There it is. It's perfect. Select all of that, combine, merge, and now you can see it's nice and complete. Now we need to do something else. We need to get rid of this pole here. It's not good. So I'm going to use the cut tool. Oops. Sometimes I hate it, sometimes I like it. I'm going to just do this in the corners. Like that. I'm going to double click this loop, this one, this one, and this one. And control delete. That's gone. And I'm going to select these vertices here and go into uh, mesh and find average and just average this out. It's the shape's gonna get distorted, it's not a big deal. And then, if we want, we can rotate it just to match the topology a little bit better. There, oops, that rotation was not good. There. okay so that's our basic pattern uh, and we need to see if it works so I'm gonna take this rotate it 90 degrees and see if it fits so you can see this point and uh, this stuff here these edges here are now here and we need to make sure they fit and if they don't we need to fix just like that Okay. Oh, 
Or another way to do it, actually this would be easier than moving it by hand. This would be much easier. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to duplicate and make sure everything fits. We're not sure if it will, but we'll test. Like that. Ninety duplicate there. So we can see our patterns already starting to look pretty good. Things are matching, it looks really nice. I'm very happy with it. I'm gonna combine, merge, and then go into the poly merge, click the distance, hold control, and middle mouse drag until things start to close up. If you go too far, that will happen, so we want to. We don't want to go too far. We want to make sure everything snaps, but not too much. Not uh, not the things we don't want to snap together. So there it is. So you can see it's lumpy, but it's there. Everything's there. But there's still some. There's still something we need to do. So we have to bear with me. Let's see, do we have any UVs? Nope. That's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go and detach. And you can use simple uh, edge selection here. Okay, there's our pattern. I'm gonna click uh, Edit Mesh, Edge, Detach. And then we can just delete that stuff. Because what we need to do is this. When I see when I press three, see how this point doesn't round? In the pattern, this is round. This rounds, this point doesn't round because we don't have we don't need it to round. So, but this we do. So I'm gonna use this like that. I'm going to draw a line there. So you can see it's starting to round there but we now need to set multiple one turn off autocomplete I'm gonna double click here shift double click hit enter then repeat there and then we can delete this little triangle here So now, perfectly round, our geometry is still the same. We have an extra loop there, which is nice. So that's perfect. What I want to do now, I'm going to select all the faces and then shift less than to shrink my selection. Go to vertices like that. I'm going to go into mesh, average, and I just want to average this out a little bit just so that things are spaced out evenly we will do that but that's okay see now it's nice it's getting nice and even okay we're almost done uh, what I want to do is duplicate again rotate 90 degrees shift D shift D Take this one, duplicate, rotate it 90, duplicate, and then negative 90. Those are our six panels. I want to combine again, merge, press 3 to preview to make sure everything merged, especially these corners. Okay, they did. You can see it's already starting to look really good. I'm going to unhide our sphere, our, the one we used uh, for the original uh, shrink wrap. I'm going to scale the sphere, uh, the, this pattern, until it goes outside that sphere. And then control select the sphere. The formers shrink wrap, the old setting should work fine. 
and we can hide and look at that it looks perfect so it's still going to be lumpy and the way to, to fix that is actually very simple you subdivide I'm going to subdivide this give it a lot more detail and if you have round objects you always want to do that so I'm going to uh, clear history unhide our guide sphere again scale this up a little bit again control select the sphere create the formers shrink wrap one more time and then hide that clear history and that is perfectly round and you can see the pattern is perfect it looks really good uh, I want to detach I'm very glad this pattern this actually <laughs> those edges selected so I'm gonna go to edit mesh detach select one of the patterns blocks select the rest delete like that and now I'm gonna do UVs quickly like this so I just did automatic projection I'm going to select all of the edges click move and sew this will move and sew I'm going to go to polygons I'm going to do unfold open this up make sure pack is on so it moves it and click apply uh, it didn't move it exactly how I wanted it we'll do this and then normalize there okay so UVs are done clear history now we'll duplicate again rotate 9 degrees select this one duplicate rotate it 90 duplicate and negative 90. Now select all of these. I'm going to combine them. Merge. Press 3 just to make sure everything's good. I'm going to go into UV layout. Select these edges and then go into select and so let me do that. Select one selection to Shell border. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Oh, now it is. The word selection to edges. Ugh. Okay. It's not letting me do it that way, so we'll have to do it the old fashioned way, and that's just selecting by hand. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, everything's selected. I'm going to go into control vertices. And then I am going to create a cluster. And now I can scale that cluster. Oops. I need to see how much. History. There it is. There's our uh, 2014 World Cup ball. And if we want, we can always harden these edges or we can extrude them in more. We can add more loops to make it tighter. Uh, one thing you can also do is if you go in and add a 
loops like that. everything have it okay and then we want to select the new loops we just made close click the uh, transform component tool and then we can just move this up to kind of close that gap a little there So you can see that looks really good. Where am I, where am I looking? There's the pattern. Okay, so there's the pattern. You can see our geometry falls right into the pattern. And what we can do is we can uh, bake the texture out or paint a new one. And that's, that would be it. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like it, press the like button and uh, subscribe and leave any comments or suggestions below. Alright, thanks for watching.